Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey there everyone, on behalf of Chris Perillo and YouTube.com slash LockerGnome, I'm Dylan Combs from the Windows Guru 84 channel. I do a video here every Friday, and this week I want to talk about software-based KVM, specifically Input Director, which can be found at InputDirector.com. To quote a YouTuber by the username of TSILB, by now, I'm sure many of you are aware of the awesomeness of Input Director, and by many of you, I mean maybe three. This program is great, I love it, I use it all the time, and surprisingly it's not nearly as well known as it should be. Uh, a similar program is, however, very well known. You've probably heard of Synergy. I really don't like Synergy, I think it's minimal. Uh, there's some features that Input Director has that Synergy does not have, and for whatever reason, uh, Synergy tends to not work with my router no matter what I do, even with port forwarding. It just won't work. So I kind of stumbled across this program by complete accident, and I love it, and I recommend it to everybody now over Synergy and certainly over a hardware-based KVM if you're using uh, multiple computers with their own monitors and want to share one keyboard and mouse with all of them. So without further ado, let's go and take a look at the software. So this is the main window you will see when you launch Input Director. It's very, very easy to set up, which I'll go through here in a second. And that's one of the main reasons I like it over Synergy. Synergy does this weird thing where when you set it up, you have to say that computer number one is to the left of computer number two, but you also have to tell it that computer number two is to the right of computer number one, or else you'll only be able to get your mouse over one way, and you'll get stuck on that screen and not be able to get back. Uh, it's just little things like that that you'll never have a problem with in Input Director. So uh, let's go, th go through some of the basic features here. You can enable this as the master. Of course, it has to be installed on all of your computers you want to control. Um, in my case, this is my i7, so this is the master that controls all the rest of them. Or you can enable it into slave mode to be uh, taken over by the computer that is the master. So for master configuration, like I said, very easy to set up. Uh, it also has support for dual monitors, which you can see here. All I have to do is put in the local IP addresses of each computer, and if you don't know or know how to find your local IP address, it will tell you in the main window uh, right here on any computer you install this on. So all you have to do is click Add, uh, type in your computer's IP address. The default port works just fine for me. I'm assuming it'll work for you. Specify your number of monitors, uh, data security and encryption if you want that, and click OK. I already have these set up, so I'll show you. I've got my one to the left and two to the right of this machine. So once you have all these set up on the master, that's pretty much it. All you have to do is scan them, make sure all your slaves are enabled as slaves, and that is it. Now you get some other options here. Uh, you can default all slaves to skip on startup. Uh, you can do cursor wraparound, which is essentially you get all the way over to the right and it'll bring itself back over to the left. I don't see any point to that. I don't use it myself. Uh, slave configuration, you get some nice options in here that I really, really do like. Allow any computer to take control. You can also specify specific IP addresses only or uh, you can allow only the computers listed here to take control as well. Uh, you can choose what to do if it is directed to shut down and you can also synchronize locking so if you like so if you like to lock your computer when you walk away like I do quick little Windows key plus L uh, it'll lock all of them if you'd like to do that. Synchronizing the screensaver. It was kind of tricky to get this one to work, but I eventually did get it working once I set all the screensavers to actually the same time limit. And I must say, it looks really, really cool when you have the same screensavers on all the computers. Uh, you can also hide the cursor when switching away from the slave machine or have it uh, automatically default back to the center of the screen. I like it to be hidden. I don't see any reason why you want to see like three or four mouse cursors. It could get confusing. Global preferences, you can choose to run it on startup, choose how it starts up, disabled or enabled as master or slave. That's kind of nice because these other computers do not have keyboards or mice hooked up to them. And as long as they're connected to the network, I can easily get access to them with Input Director. I've never had a problem except when my router resets and it tends to reassign them local, uh, new local IPs, then, uh, then that can create a problem. But if they always have the same local IPs, this is a great feature to use. Uh, you can also look at your information. You can do uh, the cursor water ripple effect, which it just creates a little wave around the cursor when you go from one screen to the other to help you see where it's at. 
You can set only administrators to change settings. Remember, screen edge enabled, disable choice, or don't center the cursor when switching back and forth using hotkeys. And they've also got a nice little window here to set up macros. So that's about all there is here with the exception of the master preferences, which everything in here is pretty self-explanatory. You can set up hotkeys, uh, various transition options that aren't really necessary to use. Uh, just some things that are nice to have if you'd like. Do not allow transitions near monitors corners is very useful. I often find myself going down in the bottom left to click on the start icon and I'll accidentally go over to another screen. It can get kind of frustrating so that's a nice option to have. Will rescan for slaves when resuming from standby by default uh, and use cache slave IP addresses. You can also set the time you want to wait for a response and, uh, and check offline slaves every how often you want to uh, see if they're still on automatically without manually rescanning. So that's about it guys. That's Input Director. You can get this. It's a free download for non-commercial use at InputDirector.com. Thanks for watching my screencast this week. You can find more of my content over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash windowsguru84. And of course, the community of geeks over at geeks.perillo.com, the Locker Gnome question and answer site at lockernome.net, and of course, the world famous live video feed, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at live.perillo.com. I'll see you next Friday.